Brad Henderson, a f- All American at the University of Mississippi and two time All SEC selection, is on the radio broadcast for the Ole Miss Rebels, joining David Kellum. And he joins us here on halftime to talk about this upcoming Arkansas Ole Miss baseball series. Brad, appreciate your time today, especially on a game day. And uh, I know you're in Fayetteville. How you doing? I'm good, guys. I appreciate you having me on. And it's uh, good to be back. In northwest Arkansas, you, it's, it's just a beautiful up here and uh, should be a good weekend, uh, looks like, weather-wise for, uh, for, some, for some baseball. Safe to say that if Ole Miss is going to make the NCAA baseball tournament, they've got to make their move, and they've got to make their move right now. And, I mean, maybe I'm saying the wrong tournament because right now they, they may struggle to make it into Hoover. And this was a team that five weeks ago, Brad, was number one in the country. I know there have been some injuries, but... You know, coming into the season, it felt like that the the narrative around Arkansas and Ole Miss was was kind of similar. You're going to score a lot of runs. Pitching is going to be a question mark for Arkansas right now. It's flip flopped a little bit. For Ole Miss, the question remains the same, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. Uh, and, and you know, injuries happen to every team. So I, you know, I don't think Ole Miss can certainly play that card because uh, we, we all go through them over the stretch of the season, but. Uh, for me, it's been the inconsistency. You know, when we when we pitched it well, we haven't hit. When we hit it well, uh, we didn't pitch. And uh, you know that that margin for error, uh, we just haven't overcome it in a lot of games. And you know, you look you, you look up, and you're six and twelve, and you know your back's against the wall. So uh, you know, it, it it's been tough up until this point. And I'll be honest with you, the, the you know, it really started the second weekend when Tennessee came to town and we were number one, they were number three, and they kind of popped us in the mouth. And uh, I don't know that we haven't, you know, fully recovered from that. Uh, you know, and they popped a lot of people in the mouth. But, uh, you know, with the expectations and, and so many seniors coming back for this last season, uh, you know, we just hadn't played well enough. And, and obviously our, our, our record shows that. Well, you got a guy who's throwing today in, in Dylan Delucia who threw the best game of the year for, for Ole Miss. And I guess it, it must have felt like it came out of nowhere because he throws a nine and incomplete game uh, against Mississippi State and and was only making his third start. And this is, a, this is an Ole Miss team that has started six different pitchers in SEC games. So, I mean, I don't know if you can expect him to perform the same kind of way, but what makes Delucia – effective or what made him effective last time out well he, he's a competitor um you know he's got some italian in him obviously with the name delusia and, and he just walks out there and expects to be good now he was really good the week before uh in the friday night win against south carolina as well in game one of that series and he just piggybacked it last week like you mentioned struck out eight uh, in that complete game, four to two win we had uh, against Mississippi State. So he, he's been really good for us. Uh, you know, he, he got hit around early, and I think he was just trying to get a feel for the league and you know whether I, he actually belonged. He's a junior college transfer from North Florida, uh, but he's been able to once he settled in, he's he's been able to really command three pitches and he, he's been able to locate a fastball in and out. He's not an overpowering guy. He's going to be you know. 90-92 with that fastball, but it's the slider for me that's been so good because he's been able to throw it in any count at any time. So he's been able to keep uh, hitters off balance and allow our offense to kind of you know run out there, maybe getting some runs, and then he certainly has settled in and, and pitched really well. One player that I I need to personally ask you about is is a guy that I uh, actually played with, which is kind of weird to say being 27 years old, thinking that I actually played with a guy that's on the Ole Miss baseball team. But uh, Hayden Leatherwood was actually uh, one of my catchers for my high school team when he was in eighth grade. He played up and actually caught a few of my varsity games my senior year. So, uh, personally, what do you think about uh, Hayden? And you talked about all the seniors coming back. He's one of those guys uh, uh, coming back. How, how has he done this season? Yeah, he's really come on as of late. Um, you know, he's a left-handed hitter, so, you know, he, he's, he probably won't play tomorrow, assuming you guys still throw Hagen Schmidt. But uh, he started the season out fairly slow. Uh you know, and we, and we were just returned so many people, so he was kind of fighting for a spot in that outfield. Uh, but he's really come on as of late. Had a big home run uh, in game two against Mississippi State. 
Uh, had a big double Tuesday. Uh, we played Mississippi State Tuesday in our Governor's Cup game. Uh, but he's really started to swing it well. He's always been a, a really good hitter. Uh, he's just been trying to grind to get in that lineup. But uh, he's certainly established himself over the last few weeks, and I fully expect him to certainly play against the uh, against the right-handers this weekend. Well, that's good. I might have to uh, venture my way to Fayetteville this weekend just to kind of actually see an old teammate, which is, like I said, 20, <laughs> at 27. Kind of weird to say, but Hayden was that good as a as a youngster, and I'm sure he, he's kept it up throughout the years. With, but with the, the off season that Ole Miss is having this year and, you know, kind of the rumors around Mike Bianco during the off season with the LSU job opening and, and stuff like that, is there any concern with the, the Mike Bianco's job security right now in Oxford? Or has he been there so long that it, you know, one bad year is not going to get the uh, rumor mill going? Uh, you know, I, I'd be lying. I'd be making something up if if I told you one way or the other. I mean, and clearly that that's something that he and Keith Carter, our athletic director, will sit down in in their uh, postseason interviews and and go over. Uh, you know, you, you hear a little bit about it. it. It's really more from the message board type things and and the uh, and the media. Uh, you know, I, I have not seen a difference. Uh, you know, from Coach B or anybody on this staff, it's it's business as usual. Uh, you know, and there's two things a team can do when when they're at this point with their backs against the wall. You either fight your way out of it or you lay down. And this team just hadn't laid down. Um, you know. Tough task ahead. Uh, we got four weekends left, uh, starting with you guys this weekend. But, uh, you know, there's still some opportunity there. Um, you know, and, and you've seen it. It's college baseball. You're talking about 18 to 22 year old kids. I- anything can happen. Anybody can get hot. Um, and we certainly have the talent to do it. But, uh, you know, we're, we're running out of time. They're, they're going to have to come in here, come up here and play well this weekend and, and just see where it goes. Brad, you played for Ole Miss um, under, under, under the, the two head coaches previously before Mike Bianco took over, uh, Don Kessinger and Pat Harrison. What, what, what are the differences between what you see from the, the way that, that, that Ole Miss plays baseball now to when, to when you played? You know, obviously, Coach Bianco's got a, a great track record of a lot of wins, and I think he's the, he's the dean of the head coaches uh, in the SEC for baseball, softball, men's and women's basketball and football i mean so that that speaks to something but what are the differences between the program and when you played and and right now consistency uh he's been able to go get players uh and add depth uh that Ole Miss had probably never had before you know they they i can remember the team in 95 i wasn't there in 95 but that was the david delucci jamie price uh teams that you know went to a regional uh, and then when I got there in the spring of 96, we didn't make a regional until 99. So it was just such a roller coaster, uh, of success. And once he stepped on campus, it's just been consistency. He, you know, he's so many post seasons and, uh, he, he's been able to recruit, uh, really good players that, that Ole Miss really hadn't seen, you know, they, they would get their, they're one or two, but, uh, you know, now it's just been roster after roster and uh, of guys going on to play pro ball and actually getting to the big leagues, and, and it's just been consistency. And that, that's the fun thing that's going to be about this weekend is, you know, I think Dave's been there maybe this is his 20th year, mm-hmm. and it's almost been the exact same model, man. And They've just battled each other. You know, there, there's no secrets anymore between those two. Uh, so it, it's always – you know, I, I looked earlier. I think our series history against Arkansas. You guys are fifty-four and forty-nine against us. You know, that's five games different mm-hmm. uh, in over a hundred games. So there's always been some parity there. And with those two, it's always been just a tremendous matchup. Uh, seeing those two battle against each other, and I know they won't say it's not Mike versus Dave, but uh, they've certainly both rolled out. Uh, two programs that have kind of been the model for success uh, over the past 20 years in this well, league. Man, I mean, Dave, the crazy thing about this, Brad, is uh, is that, and Matt Jones from the Democrat Gazette was the one who asked Dave Van Horn about this question. I think with the three games that they'll they'll coach against each other this week, that Dave Van Horn and Matt and Mike Bianco will have coached more games against each other than Skip Bertman versus Ron Polk. <laughs> 
That is wow. kind of mind blowing, and Dave had no idea about that. But I mean, you're talking about, I mean, these are two of the greatest time. coaches in yeah. the sport now. Polk and Bertman may be two of the greatest coaches in the sport's history. Yeah, and and that's something, and and you know, and, and we take it for granted because you know we get to see them every day in, in their element, and uh, you know, several years down the road, you know, we'll look back and uh, you know there'll be an SEC story made about them or or uh, you know, but we don't we don't appreciate it now because we just see them battling each other. But uh, yeah, it's just a phenomenal series, and it always has been. But it should be credited to to those two guys and and the successes they've had at each of their respective programs. One thing, uh, you either love it or you hate it when it comes to Ole Miss baseball, and and that's the powder blues. (laughs) It's one thing that (laughs) if you're Ole Miss, you take real pride in it. If you're not a a fan of the Rebels, it's kind of obnoxious and a lot of people uh, don't like it. What are your thoughts on the powder blues? And did uh, did y'all wear the powder blues when – no, we we did not. We we did not. Uh, Mike Mike introduced those several years back, and of course, it's been a a fan favorite for for all the Rebel faithful, and, and we always wear them in Game Three. Uh, so we'll wear them this Sunday, and you know, uh, I'm sure you guys will, will, will boo and, and whatever else. But well, you know uh, no, will. I do like it. It's kind of a throwback to the old Cardinals uniforms, and uh, you know, the baby blue's really taken off at Ole Miss. Uh, you know, not only. Mike kind of brought it back, but now you see football wearing it. You'll see basketball wearing it. So it's, it's really caught on. But, uh, you know, the guys love it. And at the end of the day, that's, that's kind of all that matters. And speaking of other sports down there at the University of Mississippi, when you play state in football, as long as you win the Egg Bowl, it doesn't matter what you did. It doesn't matter what your record is. As long as you beat state. Is it the same feeling around baseball? As long as you win the Governor's Cup, it doesn't matter? Well, uh, yes and no. The Governor's Cup is important, but uh, that that weekend series with them is is more important, obviously for for SEC reasons and and league standings and and all that. But uh, yeah, it's it's a good in state rivalry. Uh, you, you know, they hate us, we hate them. But it's it, you know the funny thing about baseball is all these kids played together at some point that were in the state of Mississippi with travel ball and all that. So it's. It's really just good banter from the fans. Uh, you know, and we were fortunate Tuesday to split that series with them. They took two or three from us last weekend and three really well played baseball games. We just came up short in extra innings on, on that final game. But, uh, yeah, it's a good inter, uh, interstate rivalry and, and everyone has a good time with it. But yes, in football, it's, it's all about that egg trophy and, and getting that back to Oxford for sure. Brad Online is your number one source for all your betting needs, sports info, and odds. Find all the latest sports developments, including this week's odds for the Masters Championship and the start of Major League Baseball season. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino and poker games. It's super easy to get started, so join today. Learn why everyone is saying Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on popular sports and games. Bet Online. Where the game starts. 